Well, hello, everybody. Um, I'm glad you're here today. This is a, a little bit of an experimental session. So I promised on the, uh, on the invitation that there's going to be no slides. So I had to come up with a creative way of uh, giving you the URL for the code for this. So that's my desktop wallpaper at the moment. And my name up in, uh, in big lights. It's great. So what we're going to do today, we're going to um, take a Docker image, and we're going to build it, and then we're going to make it productionized. And by that, I mean we're going to push it into uh, Amazon ECR. We're going to build a CI CD pipeline. And when we do updates, we're going to have that automatically rebuilt and then deployed into our ECS cluster. And none of this infrastructure exists at the moment. So I am praying to the demo gods that this is going to work. Um, so please pray for me right now. So let's get started. Um, I'm going to take you to the GitHub page, first of all. So I'm going to show you what you can download after this session and uh, have a play with. So on here, um, there's a few requirements you're going to need. You're going to need an AWS account, of course. Uh, you're going to need the AWS command line interface installed, the Docker engine, and uh, Git as well, because we're going to use um, some repositories to uh, store our code in. We're going to touch on a few topics here. We're going to touch on using ECS which is our EC2 container service. We're going to use ECR, which is our Docker registry, for want of a better uh, phrase. We're going to use code commit for Git, but it would be quite simple to switch this out to use GitHub if you wanted. Um, and then we're going to use code pipeline and code build to bring all this together and actually build our Docker image and push it into ECR. You could also bring Jenkins to this if you wanted to get really fancy. There's lots of ways of doing this, and code pipeline works with a whole host of tools. So there's a little bit of a high-level diagram included in the documentation. Um, this is about as far as my uh, documentation gets with diagrams and uh, pretty things like that. It took me hours. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so with this, we've got a VPC. Now, I've cheated a little bit. I've already deployed my VPC just through time constraints of doing this session. In this VPC, we've got six subnets three public, three private. And they're spread out across availability zones. So we've got high availability when we build our cluster. I'm only going to use two bits of CloudFormation today, because CloudFormation kind of masks what's actually happening in the background. So I want you to actually see it so you can understand it. And then you can CloudForm it after. We're going to CloudForm, first of all, a cluster. And now, with the advent of Fargate being out, where you don't have to actually bring EC2 instances, I've got my template split up. So the first one creates this cluster in the EC2, um, uh, in the AWS environment. And then the second one I'm going to bring along is going to add some EC2 hosts for us and tell them to join that cluster that we've just created. That's the plan anyway. So let's get this bit done first. Let's get to a point where um, we, we've got this cluster up and running. Actually, I'm not. I'm going, to show you, I'm going to show you something else first. I'm going to show you the container I've pre-built, just to show you that you can, as a workflow, go from desktop all the way to production very, very easily. Now, yet again, once, once again for uh, brevity, I've pre-built this image, because otherwise it takes ages downloading a load of packages. What we're going to deploy is a, is a fun little app called OSJS, and it gives you like a virtual operating system in a browser. A little bit of fun. Um, there's nothing really fancy to it. It's just written in Node.js. It's very easy to build. And then we're going to do an update later on. We're going to add some more packages to it. And you're going to see how the CI CD pipeline actually gets this deployed. Well, first of all, let me show you what it looks like. And we're going to, we're going to run it locally. So is that big enough for you guys? Did you want it a bit bigger? Let's make it a bit bigger. Um, so I know it runs on port 8000. And we're just going to run it like this. Cool. Helps if I give it the uh, container name, doesn't it? And I'm going to use version 1. Ooh. Demo gods are not with me. Ah. What have we got? Ah, I know what. I was playing with this before. So let's fix this live. If you ever get this error, <laughs> um, quick bit of a Docker PS, it's already running. So just pretend that run command worked, and we'll, we'll roll with it. So if I go to, back to my browser, I'm going to open up a, uh, a local host 
connections for 8,000. And on here, we have our virtual desktop, OSJS. Now, I want you to pay particular, exam uh, particular um, notice to this menu that's up in the top corner. How big is that for you guys? Let's, let's see if we can zoom in. Probably not. So on here, we've got um, graphics, multimedia, office, system, and utilities. That's all we've got. Remember that for later. I'm going to be doing a pop quiz, and somebody can, can see what's changed. So this is what it looks like. And as a developer, I could run this on my uh, laptop. I could add things. I could fix things. And I can play around locally. So it's great for local development. But now it's ready to go into production. What are we going to do? Well, first of all, let's, let's pop back into our example here. And we're going to, um, we're going to generate a, uh, a repository in Git. So I've got somewhere to store my Docker file and my kit and, and my code. In this example here, we have a, um, the nice bit that tells you how to generate your SSH key and add it to IAM. Um, so if you're doing this at home after, um, this is how you set up your code commit. Uh, SSH keys. We can scroll down a little bit here and just take this command. I'm going to create a brand new repository. So let's clear this out of the way. And we're going to create a repository called OSJS. I'm putting it in the EU West region, um, so it's local to me and local to where my cluster is going to be. And I get this bit of JSON come out at the end because I've got my console set up to have JSON. Um, and in there, we've got things like a clone URL. Now, this is quite important. I'm going to need this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this. And at the moment, this is an empty repository. So let's drop to a new window and make it bigger again. And we're going to do a git clone and pull this repository down and wait for it to pull down. Here we go. We've, we've cloned an empty repository. So let's go into this. Um, into here, and let's actually add some code to it. So I'm going to copy a file, and I've got a, la a rather large uh, path to type in now. So just ignore my tardiness on how I organize my files, please. Uh, git me docker, and we're in version one. So version one is the one that I'm running on my laptop here. And we have a Docker file. Oop. And we're actually going to put it somewhere this time. So I put this in here, and we've got a Docker file. So let's have a quick look at this Docker file and see the contents of it. It's quite a simple container. Um, if you have a look at it, uh, we're using the latest Debian um, upstream container. I'm doing some app gets. It's not particularly efficient, because I should be really going into that container and uh, clearing up my app cache after this. And, and putting some of those run commands on one line, just so my image is a lot smaller. So that's what you should be doing. Um, and then right at the end, we're just going to run the OSJS app when the container starts. So not a complex Docker file for you to, to play about with. So I'm now going to add this uh, into my repository. And then I'm going to do a git commit. No. A git git commit. It's because I really mean to do it. And then we're going to do a git push. And we're going to push it up. And once that goes up, we'll have a quick look at the uh, AWS console, because it will now change now I've created my first repository. So I'm going to just show you in here what it looks like in code commit. As it refreshes. Da, da, da. So we've got this OSJS um, repository now in code commit. And this just basically contains my Docker file. We're going to put this to one side for a second while we get some other bits and pieces ready. But this is going to become really important as we make the CI CD pipeline. Right, let's have a look. So we've, we've run our Docker um, container locally already, as you can see. So we want to start preparing things and let's get in a cluster ready. So let's pop on here and let's get a cluster ready. Now, when I create my cluster in CloudFormation, and the CloudFormation files are included in the GitHub repository as well, one thing to know is that I'm automatically creating a um, public load balancer and a private load balancer that's going to be connected to my cluster. 
And that's because I use the same CloudFormation for quite a few demos, so it's just really easy for me to, to keep it all in one. And I was a bit lazy. Right, so my dev VPC, if you remember back to that diagram, I've got those six subnets, um, three in each availability zone, three public, three private. We're going to deploy our instances into the private subnet and our public load balancer into the public one. This is the way you should work all the time. In public subnets, you should only really put load balancers or bastion hosts. Anything else you put in there, it's not hard to then make a little mistake and open too many ports or give too much access to that machine. So if you want to control your security and have multiple layers in there, so hardened from, from the core out, think about your network topology as well. Use private subnets. Even separate private subnets from other private subnets. Elastic Cache can have its own. RDS can have its own set of subnets. So think about your subnet design when you're doing things like this. Right, let's create a new stack. And hope this is nice and fast. If anybody saw my demo yesterday, I, was, I had a, a, a very uh, happy moment when everything turned green. So um, hopefully we'll repeat that today. So I'm going to not pick that one. That's yesterday's demo. I'm going to go in here. No. And first of all, I'm going to create my cluster. I'll show you what this does as well, because this, this is quite good fun. Um, this is going to create a cluster with no instances in it. And that now works, because we've got Fargate as an option. And Fargate, you don't manage any of those workers underneath. You just give us a container, we run it, we place it, we scale it, we make sure it's highly available. Um, it's, it's really quite useful for if you're doing some um, containers that don't need anything special to run. If you've got containers where you might need to do some tweaking on the host, say it's U limits or you want to do a kernel tweak, bring an EC2 instance to it. If you're not doing anything special, use Fargate. It's far simpler. And it lets you focus just on your application and your container and, and have it run. So let's call this cluster. And let's hit next and create. There's some IAM resources that get created as well. So when we create a Fargate cluster, there's some housekeeping rules um, that we need to put in for IAM. So the Fargate instances can actually reach out and pull images from your ECR repository, for example. So creating progress is going to happen here. And we're going we're gonna to keep refreshing and, uh, and hope. Um, I should really do this before I start talking. I always forget and talk first and then hit deploy. So um, I have a few minutes of heart attack on the stage waiting for this to happen. So when this creates, the next thing I'm going to do, and if we have a look here, not this one. This one. OK, so if we have a quick look in the CloudFormation, uh, CD CloudFormation, and we have a look at the cluster one. It's quite a simple um, CloudFormation template. Um, the main thing on here is we've got the ECS cluster and the type cluster. I've also um, gone in here and given it some Fargate security groups as well, because like I say, I like to use hybrid clusters. You can bring EC2 and Fargate um, concepts together because it's all managed through the same control plane for you. So this is fairly simple. It's creating some load balancers for us, a public load balancer. We're allowing some security groups through, so everything should work nicely. The next one we're going to bring along is the ECS hosts. And this is going to go through, and I found quite uh, usefully in here that um, you can create maps within CloudFormation, so you can put AMIs in there. I've included a note to where the latest AMIs are, so if you want to update those as they change for security, uh, please do. Um, we're doing a very similar thing. We are um, creating some new security groups, but this time for my ECS hosts, and they're almost identical to the ones before, and we're allowing access from the load balancers. Um, we've got some auto-scale values in here as well for another demo, and then we have a launch configuration. So this launch configuration will go and actually build, build my stack for me, um, and install what I need to do, the ECS agent, for example, and the SMS agent on top. Um, we won't dig too much into that, and we'll go back and check our stack status. Yeah, I like it when things go green. So 
Let's start the next one before I start talking too much again. This is going to bring the ECS hosts. I'm going to bring three ECS hosts into this, so three EC2 hosts, one in each availability zone in those private subnets. So hosts in here, ECS cluster. Now I need to get that information because that isn't in my template. So within here, if I open this one in a new tab, I've got a cluster name, and this is what CloudFormation has just created for me. So I called it cluster. You saw me type that in on the, on the variable. Um, in the script, it already says ECS cluster. And then that big, long um, string of text and numbers after, that's just something CloudFormation appends to, to my cluster name. And as you can see at the moment, there's actually no, um, there's no host. There's no container hosts in there, as you can see, that side of the screen. So this is what we should be doing now. And we're going to go into dev, and we're going to make them extra large instances, mainly because I don't pay the bill for this AWS account. Thank you, Jeff. So in here, I'm going to go through. I'm going to acknowledge the IAM uh, resources created again. And the nice bit is that when I tear this stack down, it clears up those IAM resources for me as well. So this is going to start creating some EC2 hosts for us. And we've got a cluster ready for prep. I've got my Docker container that's on my laptop. I've got a little bit of it in Git. But we need to then merge those together and make deployments happen. So that will be the next part of this when my hosts all come up. And we can have a look at a little bit of the status in this. If we go into the EC2 part of the console, we should see some instances uh, spinning up with any luck. Oh, no running instances. But have we got any being created? Come on, CloudFormation, don't let me down. Do, do, do. Right, we've got security groups created. We have um, IAM roles created. We're just waiting for the hosts. Let's see. Chat among yourselves. <laughs> So as this comes up, so I'll show you what we're going to do next as we, as we move along here. Um, once the cluster has started, we'll get a nice, uh, a nice section here that says everything's done. What I'm then going to do is, uh, this is a little bit about configuring a, a, a Docker repository. Um, so we're going to do, uh, I'm going to push my image that I've got on my laptop up to ECR, first of all. I'm going to get an initial image there. And to do that, you can use the normal Docker tools, but you need your IAM credentials. So what you need to do is run this little command here, and this will go away. It will get your temporary IAM keys from STS, and it will do a Docker password for you. So now, my Docker uh, toolkit has access to my ECR repositories. It's pretty easy, and if you wrap it in, those, uh, in the dollar sign and those brackets, it makes it really, really quick to go through as well. So, that's ready for me there. What I'm then going to do is I'm going to go and create a repository for this. So we'll do this while we're waiting for my instances to come up. Let's see if they are. Ah. As long as that doesn't go red, I'll be happy. So let's go in here and let's go to container service. Does this need zooming in anymore, by the way, or can you all see it? It's all good. So in repository, this is where I, I put my, um, my Docker uh, files. I'm just going to delete it, because I obviously didn't clean up when I was testing. And I'm going to create a repository. Pretend it wasn't there before. I'm going to create an OSJS repository, and I'm going to hit Next Step. And you'll actually get that command that I just put in um, to log in. But I find wrapping it in those, uh, in those brackets just simplifies it. Otherwise, you have to copy and paste the output as a Docker command, which is a Docker login command. So um, it just simplifies it. Now, I've already built my Docker file, and I did that just because it takes a long time to pull everything down. But I now need to tag my, uh, my Docker image, and I need to tag it so it's got the name of the uh, repository I'm going to push it to. Very simple command. I'm using Docker tools as a standard here, and we're going to hope my upload goes well. So what this is doing, it's taking each layer of that Docker image, and it's pushing it up, and it's storing it in ECR for us. 
So we'll have a look at this now, and let's have a look at CloudFormation status as we're going along. Du, du, du. We've got six more events, so hopefully one of those is actually creating some EC2 instances for us. Yes, create complete. So if we drop back here, and I'm going to say done on this because I don't need that configuration information anymore, and I go back to my cluster, and wait for it to refresh. This is what happens when you start uploading on a public Wi-Fi network a lot of data. Here we go. Show me my cluster, not show me the money. I'm gonna have a little bit of a flick around and hope the console comes back to life. What this should do, if you remember before, it said Fargate and EC, uh, EC2 underneath. Um, it should now say on there, we've got three EC2 hosts. I'm really keeping my fingers crossed that we have. So um, I'm going to go and have a look quickly in the EC2 console. Everything's slowing down. I don't like that retrying as well. We might be using CICD all the way, guys. So let's have a look in EC2 quickly. When the internet goes slow, it's just what we need. Anyone got a mobile hotspot? Bear with me. You can have a look at the pretty uh, desktop as we're waiting. Uh, it's quite cool. We can draw some, uh, some graphics on here. So we can go in and draw squares just what you've always wanted to do in your browser. <sighs> the internet is failing me. Let's try switching Wi-Fi networks here. Let's join your network and see if it works any better. Way, look at that, nobody uses the internet. Everybody switch your phones off, laptops down, Nobody do anything. <laughs> so this is now pushing up. Um, let's go back here, and hopefully our cluster information will update as well. But we are pushing a Docker image up. This is good news for everybody here, because you actually want to see it running on ECS, don't you? This is the problem. We have no slides. You have to kind of ad lib everything as you're waiting for things to happen. So. Uh, I apologize to you all for listening to my rambling at the moment. Here we go. So while we're waiting for this to happen, just out of interest, how many of you are using Docker in production at the moment? Ah, good show of hands. There's, there's a fair few of you not, though. So how many of you are considering using Docker in production? Yeah, even more. Excellent. It's great. So obviously, Amazon, uh, Amazon Web Services has got ECS which is what we're demoing now, and Fargate mode, which is a way of not running any uh, instances. Uh, and we've got EKS coming along as well, which is our Kubernetes offering. Um, late 2018, we're going to be having Fargate mode for EKS as well. And that will allow you to have a Kubernetes infrastructure without managing any infrastructure. Um, sounds too good to be true, but it's, it's pretty awesome once you get it running. And it's all um, upstream open source as well for EKS, so it, it follows, and you can use all the tools that you're used to using. Show me my cluster. Come on, look at that. Failed to list clusters. This happened to me the, uh, the other night. There you go, look at that. <laughs> this happened to me the other night. I was doing a, 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 a demo at the uh, DevOps London Exchange, and um, that started updating Fargate in the background and hadn't told me, so my service discovery failed. And I had to hack around it live on, uh, on stage, and that was a little bit nerve-wracking, because I didn't know whether the Node.js was going to accept an IP address or try and resolve it and do something stupid. Luckily, the IP worked. So, right, we've got three container instances. This is good. We have a cluster. We have a hybrid cluster. We can run services in Fargate mode, or we can run them in EC2 mode. So what we're actually going to go and do now is create a task definition. And I've actually got one here. Um, 
that should probably be cleaned up. Let's, let's do it properly. Let's show you how all this is working. We've got 20 minutes. That's good. So in our task definition, um, we'll go back to our instructions, and we're going to create an EC2 mode one here. You could try, if you wanted and felt, uh, felt like experimenting, try this in Fargate mode as well. So at the end of this document, it tells you, play in Fargate mode if you want. We're going to create an EC2 uh, task in this case. And our task is OSJS. Are we calling it that in my document? Uh, OSJS desktop. Desktop. And our task role, I'm going to pick my ECS task role for this because it's on ECS. My networking, I always tend to use AWS VPC. And this is where the task gets given an elastic network interface in your, um, in your VPC. So you've got a real IP address that you can route to from within the container uh, platform and from external, which is great. Um, we're not going to put any execution roles in. I'm just going to uh, limit this to 204. And let's go for one CPU as well. So we'll go in here, and we're now going to add our container definition. So this is OSJS desktop as well. And the image is. Hopefully uploaded. Yeah, look at that. Um, good timing as well. So here we've got um, my repository, and I've got this this URI here, and I'm going to put this in. Now you can actually use public Docker um, hub um, images in here. If you want to um, use private Im uh, images, you can only use ETR at the moment. But we are bringing out support later in the year for private third-party repositories. So keep your eye out for that uh, latest. And we're going to give this half the resource. And we have a port mapping to put in. I forgot this once. Didn't end well. So port 8000, as you saw when I ran localhost 8000. Everything else is pretty much standard. We're going to go through. We're just going to add this. I'm not going to do anything special here. I'm not going to add any uh, constraints either. It can run in any availability zones for me. And then the next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to create a service from this. And it's an EC2 service. It's already picked my cluster. This is OSJS desktop. And I only want one version of this desktop running for this particular demo. We go to the next step. And luckily, I can remember all these details. But um, if you have a look at the CloudFormation that's included, you'll see what the subnets are. And you'll see that all the private subnets are 10.0, 3, 4, and 5. And that's where my Elastic Network interface is going to get created. I'm going to edit this. And I'm going to change this to a, I'm actually quite proud of myself for remembering this bit as well. Um, I'm going to change this to a custom TCP. And I'm going to set this to port 8,000. This is the sort of thing that you should be putting into CloudFormation, because then it makes it repeatable, and you can do it in any, any cluster that you've got running. So you can move your workloads around very easy. I don't want a public IP. And I want this to connect to an application load balancer. These are the two that I created with CloudFormation. I'm going to pick the public one. I'm going to add my container port there. I'm going to listen on port 80. Uh, my target group can be auto-created. I'm just going to set it as a default way. Navigation one. And then let's move this health check as well. Now, service discovery. Because I'm not doing anything special with this container. It's just a single container within a task. I don't really need any service discovery. I'm not looking for a database in the back end. I'm not looking for a Redis um, cluster or anything. I don't need service discovery. Plus, the team broke it on me last time. so. I'm sulking. Right, let's go through here, and we're going to hit next step. And what we should see here now, when we create the service, see, this is the bit I like, the lots of green things. It makes, it makes Rick very happy. When we go back to the view in the service, um, we look at the cluster, and you'll see we've got a service definition. And we've got a service definition. I keep pointing to the wrong side. Uh, we've got one service definition, and we've got one pending task. That task, what's happening now, is in the background, my ECS host has been instructed to pull that image from ECR. 
it's getting that and it's going to, uh, to run that for me. So if we refresh this a few times, eventually that pending task will move into running. But let's go ahead and look back at our document now. All the information about what subnext to use is all in this document as well, so it makes it quite easy if you want to try this out at home. We've done all that. Right, now we're going to automate the Docker build as well. So we can set this bit up while we're waiting for our task to create. What we're going to use, we're going to use code build and code pipeline. When code pipeline notices that in code commit, I've done a new git push, um, it's going to trigger a code build event. And code build is going to go away, run a, a Ubuntu instance for me, create a, a Docker image, take that Docker image, and it's going to then push it into my ECR for me. After it's successfully pushed to ECR, it's going to tell my ECS cluster to replace the current version that's running. So we've now got a CI CD pipeline come in. So what we're going to do here, let's have a quick look. I'm going to need to change a few things in this file as we bring it across. So let's go back to my Git repository that's just got this Docker file in. And we're going to copy, I'm cheating for half the path here, we're going to copy a file in called a build spec. I've done it again. And we're going to have a look at build spec here. So in here, there's going to be a few things I need to change. Um, this may not have changed, actually, but let's just do it for showing you what you'd be doing at home. Um, you're going to need to change this repository URI, because that big, long string at the beginning is my account number. Um, so we're going to go in here, and we're going to go back to my repositories again, and we're going to take a copy of that. And it's probably exactly the same. So that's where my repository is, and that's where I'm going to be pushing to. In this pre-build, what we're doing, we're doing that um, ECR login um, from our code build environment. Uh, once we've built it, we're going to then tag it, and then we're going to use code pipeline to trigger the ECS off. So once it's uploaded and been pushed in the post-build uh, commands. So if I have a quick look back at my documentation, we go through here, and this bottom one should now say, I'll update that and get in a bit. If you do get any, if you do get any problems with this, do open issues and um, or PRs, and I will merge those in, especially for spelling mistakes, please. So I'm going to save that now, and I'm going to add this file to Git. So let's just cheat and copy all three commands, and we're going to push that up to my Git repository. And this is just where my Docker file lives. This isn't the Docker repository; it's the Git repository too many repositories. So we're going to have a quick look back at ECS, and we're going to have a bit of a refresh, and we've got one running task. This is all great news to me. One thing that we can have a look at now, let's close the local host version of this. If we go into my load balancers, console gremlins today, isn't there? Why are you going slow? You've probably got something crazy going on here. Let's go for pub. Here we go. I think it was my uh, dragging up on the screen that did that. So I'm going to take the, uh, the DNS name here or just copy it. I'm going to put it in here, and hopefully, what should happen is I've now got this OSJS desktop running in ECS. So that bit's working, but I did a lot of manual build to set that up. So what I'm going to do now is put this pipeline in place and make that automatic. So remember that menu? We've got graphics, multimedia, office, system, and utilities. I want some games. So this is what we're going to do in our pipeline. We're going to add some games to this. So let's go here quickly, and we're going to automate this deployment. Now, I'm going to go quite fast with this, so I hope you're okay with that. We're going to create a pipeline, and we're going to get started here, and we're going to use everything I've said in this document just to give it a test. So we're going to call the pipeline OSJS Desktop, 
and we're going to hit next. Our source provider is uh, CodeCommit, but you can use S3 or GitHub. So you can uh, have options there. We're going to refresh this. We have an OSJS, and we have a master branch. Next step. Our build provider, like I said, you can bring Jenkins or uh, Solano CI now. Um, we're going to add code build. And on here, we're going to go in and we're going to create a new build project. So this is going to be OSJS desktop again. You're noticing a pattern here. And we're going to use a, uh, a code build image. We're going to choose an operating system, which is Ubuntu. And our runtime is Docker. I panicked for a second then when I couldn't see Docker. And we'll just pick the, the latest one. I'm not going to do anything special. We're going to use the build spec to build all this. And I won't enable cache this time. But if you want to speed up your Docker builds, enable cache. And then you'll get a, a cache version to, to go through. Uh, VPC ID, it doesn't matter where I build this, to be honest. Um, so once we create this, code build is going to, um, is going to go and automatically do a lot of things for us. I'm picking random ones here. I do believe this works. <laughs> so I'm going to save this project now. Now, code pipeline and code build in the background has created some IAM roles for me. But those IAM roles at the moment don't have any access to push to ECR. So we're going to add those specifically. Uh, we'll hit next step here. And our deployment provider is going to be Amazon ECS. Our cluster name, I've only got one and our service name, so it's nice and easy to find. You don't need to do anything special here. You hit next step. And we're going to pick, not that. We're going to pick code pipeline service, next step. Create our pipeline. So we've got a pipeline that's been created here. Uh, nothing's happening on it at the moment. And then we're going to go in, and we're just going to tweak my IAM role to give it the power user um, for ECR. So if I go into my roles, and I search for code pipeline service, or it says in my document what the name is. So we're going to scroll through here. And here we go, code build hyphen. This is our one. This is one we're going to edit. And in the permissions, we're going to attach an, a, a policy to this. And the policy is called Amazon EC2 container registry power user, because that's easy to say. So we're going to search for that. And we're going to add this permission. This is going to let me do lots of things with the registry and push images and pull images. So that's now going to be added. Oh, I think. Let's close that. Go back. And that's all done. So we've got that added to us now. Right, so the next thing really is to, um, to trigger an event off and get an automatic redeploy happen. So. If you look in our, uh, in our GitHub repository, um, you'll find another file. Um, let's go up here. You'll find a version 2 of our Docker file. And in version 2, um, I'm adding a games package. So we're going to update our desktop. I'm now going to do a, a, a git commit. Add some games. And we're going to push this up to our code commit repository. So this is going up. And it will take a few seconds to trigger this. But if we drop into the pipeline now, 
what we'll get is on here, we've noticed a change. So it's now actually triggering a code build event. This is good, more green, I like it. So in our code, uh, our code build event, we can actually dig in and have a look, and this is quite interesting, because we can see what's happening underneath. You can see that um, my, my image is pulling down um, and building my Docker file. It's running the commands within my Docker file, so pulled down Debian, it's now doing an app get update, an app get install, it's installing the OSJS uh, uh, desktop, and it, it's creating it all. Pre-build, uh, build is happening now, and these are the build logs. And if we jump back to our code pipeline, when this goes green, I think we've probably got two builds going on here just to confuse me. Um, when these go green, what will happen then is the staging will happen. Now, I haven't set any manual intervention here. I just want it to go ahead and replace my container for me. It's going to just whip the legs out from underneath it and replace it. If you were doing a deployment where you've got multiple versions of a task, you can get more prescriptive there. You can say, make sure you've got X amount of healthy tasks before replacing one. And it'll do a graceful replacement of those uh, tasks so you won't have any downtime for your users. So we've got another code build going on. Don't know why. We'll just pretend that's not happening and hope it works. So we'll drop back in here now. This is the last little bit, and then we can all get some lunch, I think. Or have you had lunch already? Have I missed lunch? Oh, no. <laughs> um, never mind. So what will happen here is we will get a new version in our task definition, automatically updated. It was OS, uh, JS Desktop 3. But when the image gets updated, it'll actually replace that for us. And one of the things it actually will replace in there is the name of the image, and it will actually use the git um, tag from the commit um, will get used in that. So <clears throat> we go in here, and we need to wait for a little bit and, uh, and see an event go. Let's have a look what's happening on this one. So like I said, this is installing a shed load of stuff using NPM, and once it's built, we should get the in progress will turn to succeeded, and then the next part will trigger. We'll start pushing it up to ECR. So this will be there very, very quickly, I hope. Refresh this page, because refreshing a page always helps. So it normally takes about four or five minutes to build, so it will be there very, very quickly, and uh, we shall then get our deployment in. Now, the whole point of this this lab really, and this type of session that we're doing here, is to not bore you with slides, but just to give you code that you can take away and play with at home. And I really want you to do that. And if you can improve this, please send us a, a, a pull request, and I'll get that merged in. Um, we're going to do a lot of other topics as well. If anybody was in uh, the AI one this morning, Julian was doing a uh, AI workshop very similar. Commit back to that. And then Hater is going to go on and do a serverless building a single page web app uh, this afternoon. All of these sessions have no slides, so it's incredibly risky for us up here because internet connections fail and things like that. <laughs> so let's see what's happening now. And things take ages to build for no good reason. Five minutes. Anybody gonna guess? Anybody gonna guess how long it's gonna take? Should we have a, uh, a sweepstake? We can make some money. Come on, Liz, make it work for me. It's always nice seeing a friendly face in the audience here. <laughs> Especially when we're waiting. Here we go, we've gone green. Thank you, Liz. <laughs> I'm indebted to you. So what's gonna happen now, we've got a new version of the container, and if we have a quick look in our task definition, with any luck, that's updated, and we've got a version four. So this is great news. We've got every faith it's going to work now. And what will have happened in this URL is, you can see, instead of using latest, what I put in as the, uh, the image URL earlier, it's actually got that git commit ID at the end of it. So every time you do a deployment, it replaces the image, it's uniquely tagged, and it'll just get deployed. We go back here, and we're doing it in progress again, but we don't really mind. OSJS loads, 
and that's not the new version yet, we should see a pending task come. We've got an, a running task. One will be dying very soon, I hope. <laughs> so we go in here, and let's have a bit of a refresh. Wait for this to come. This is where it all falls to pieces, Rick. It's time to go home. Close that down. Refresh. That double build might be, I think. But we have a task definition here now, which is OSDes.4. Um, we've got one desired task, but two running. So what it's waiting to do is waiting for those health checks to pass, and then it should, uh, should kill the other task off with any luck. Otherwise, I'll just do it manually and cheat. You didn't see that. Impatience and running out of time. So for my uh, final piece here, OSJS is loading. We click down here, and we've got no games. <laughs> I probably killed the wrong task. But basically, what should happen is we should get that new version come in. It could be I didn't commit the Docker file back. I don't know. But have a go at the code, work through the, the readme document, and I hope you uh, have a good fun playing with it. So I'll leave that to you now and uh, let you all go off to your next session. Thanks very much.